Please give a warm welcome to Mr. Nick Williams. So I, uh, I have a technical background and I've always been good at uh, math and physics. So in fact, until recently, I was pretty sure you could describe every situation in fine detail using science. Historically for me, the technical side of problems always outweighed the softer sides. Uh, I know I'm not alone when I say I think this way. I work at an underground coal mine. You're going to be pretty hard pressed to find a more old school, coal dust breathing, we're the tough guys mentality than you're going to find in an underground coal mine. <clears throat> so, CIM's leading a mining program. I found out through this program that I operate out of what you would call the achiever action logic. So I won't get into the details, but basically it means that uh, the way I think and perform is dictated by my desire to achieve results. I want to perform well, and at the end of the day, that final number means everything. It defines who I am and what I, why I do what I do, or at least it did. But guess what else I found out? Being an achiever can only get you so far. I'm here to tell you today that there's these things called feelings. They're important and they are necessary to get the best results. As the inaugural winner of the CIM Leading in Mining Essay Contest, I figured I had another bullet point to add to my resume and I felt proud of myself for accomplishing another achievement. I figured this course would be a breeze, it isn't, and at the end of it, I would have all my bases covered. But then Rosie Steves, our CIM leading and mining facilitator and the founder of the program came into the picture. I found out what I really won was a voucher to see a psychiatrist. <laughs> In fact, after our first workshop, I told my wife, I'm pretty sure I got doomed into seeing a shrink. <laughs> so to all the engineers and the technical people in the room, there are these things called feelings. And whether you want to admit it or not, you have them. Lots and lots of them, and you have to be aware of them. I used to say to people that I have two feelings, anger and indifference. <laughs> I was a bit blindsided when I found out there was more to it than that. Okay, enough about feelings. <laughs> Lames catch feelings. Feelings aren't, nor aren't normally something that those of us in the mining industry want to invest our time and money into. What about the bottom line? That's what really matters. Here's the thing, there's overwhelming evidence out there that suggests profit is directly related to great leadership, which comes from recognizing feelings. I went from your typical engineer to a true believer in the necessity to develop things like emotional intelligence and self-awareness. I know you're sitting back and you're nodding your heads in agreement, yes, yes, we need our people to be better leaders, yes. But the development, need, development needs to happen at every level, from the face to the corner office. You may have the MBA and the impressive title, but unless you're building relationships, dealing with feelings, you're not getting the results you could be. Are you 100% confident that you know what's going on? Do you know what your people are thinking and what your people are feeling? And what are they not telling you? And finally, what are you doing about it? <clears throat> if you aren't willing to look in the mirror, face how others experience you and deal with it, your organization is leaving money on the table. All right, so what did I actually learn over the last 12 months? First of all, leadership isn't a word to be taken lightly, thrown around to create a buzz or used as an excuse to post clever quotes on LinkedIn. It's much, much more than that. It isn't managing a budget or creating the most efficient mind plan. It isn't even being the go-to guy at the site or in the office. One of the most effective leaders that I've met through this program has a degree in electrical engineering and runs an underground uranium mine with zero electrical equipment. But it takes hard work to get to that level. And to be honest, I don't think that anyone will ever be able to say that they've been there, done that, when they talk about their leadership development. It's something that's career long even lifelong, and it's always evolving. 
but ultimately it is a personal choice and a serious commitment. So here are some of the quintessential qualities that I figured out I needed to start my own journey to becoming a more effective leader. <clears throat> First one, self-awareness. So the most important aspect of starting the journey is your willingness to work at developing yourself on a personal level. You have to be okay with who you are and you have to be willing to let go of the things that, while may be comforting, are holding you back from moving forward. You won't get past the starting line if you're not willing to actually make significant changes. That said, I want to emphasize that authenticity is equally as important. I know it may seem a bit paradoxical, but I learned that you can adjust yourself and let go of the things that aren't helping without losing who you actually are. Being authentic means that you're comfortable in your own skin and you don't waver on the things that are really important to you. I found out that I can adapt my style to build rapport with different types of people without letting go of my authentic self. I learned that I couldn't hide behind my title. In fact, I had to work harder to get the truth and build real connections with my guys underground. I'll let you in on one of the strategies that has helped me the most when I find out what others think about me or my effectiveness as a leader, and I learned this from Rosie. So when someone gives you constructive feedback, which happens, instead of becoming defensive, I let my go of my need to be that achiever, and I think to myself, how fascinating. It really helps. It helps get rid of that knee-jerk reaction to put your defenses up, and that provides you with the opportunity to develop real, no-bullshit relationships with the people you work with. And why is that important, you ask? When you have these kinds of relationships with the people around you, they feel like they can approach you with the good and, more importantly, the bad news, and not have to worry about getting shut down, reprimanded, dismissed, it creates an atmosphere where people are free to think and come up with solutions to problems that need to be addressed instead of sitting on them or waiting until it's too late to bring them up. I'm sure everybody in this room has been in a situation where they haven't been able to have that difficult conversation because they're afraid of what the reactions would be. And I'm sure that everyone in this room has been in a situation where serious problems could have been avoided had that conversation taken place. When you really know yourself, why you do what you do, and how you think, you become more and more aware of what your strengths and your weaknesses are. When you know what you're really good at, you can leverage that, and you, you can become more effective. Play on your strengths, don't just focus on your weaknesses. Another key to the journey is understanding and accepting the fact that every person you meet is different, and probably sees even normal everyday situations in a different light than you do. Diversity, right? This isn't something you should just accept, you should embrace it. People with different backgrounds or points of view will probably see different things in the same challenges, and as a result, will probably come up with different ways of dealing with them. What you need to learn, and believe me, it isn't easy, I haven't figured it out, is how to leverage that diversity to create outstanding results that would have otherwise been mediocre. Learn where other people are coming from, what their motivations are, and what agendas they may have. Don't take everything personally and realize that through effective leadership, you can create something great out of something that may at first seem like complete chaos. Don't get upset with the way people think about things. Instead, stand back and say, how fascinating and find a way to use it to achieve the end goal. <clears throat> so leadership comes from all directions. I'm sorry to tell you this, folks, but leadership doesn't just come from the directors, managers, or supervisors. In really great organizations, leadership is everywhere. I found out through this program that leading my boss and my, beer, and my peers, and my beers, and my peers is just as important as leading my reports. You can either lead up, down, sideways, and you can be led by the CEO right down to the summer student. It's something that's really crucial to the overall success of an operation. 
Leadership has to come from where it's most effective. I'm not going to come up with better solutions to all the little problems than the guys are underground. Where I come in is facilitating an open environment and giving people the courage and the confidence that they need to come forward with those ideas. Again, this goes back to the being self-aware and promoting those crucial no bullshit relationships. <clears throat> so, what is leadership? At the end of the day, in my opinion, the job of a leader is to create and build up even more great leaders. Think about that for a second, really. Think about how much more effective your operation would be if everyone was firing on all cylinders and great ideas were coming out of the woodworks from everybody all the time. Think about how much more efficient that boring weekly meeting, and I know we all have the boring weekly meeting, how, think about how much more efficient that would be if everyone was on the same page working to the same end. Think about the inefficiencies that you see around you every day and think about turning them into profit. It sounds like a pretty good day. <clears throat> so, is this program worth it? In a word, yeah, it is. The operation I work at is one of the smallest in the country, but even a small operation like mine costs a lot of money to keep running. When you think about the money and time that gets thrown away because of poor leadership, the price for CIM's leading and mining program is kind of like a drop in the bucket. <clears throat> if someone at site is really angry, you know, at management, believe me, they can find ways to cost you money and undermine productivity. Uh, obviously, lost productivity is lost money. And what about the guy that's doing an okay job who could be doing a really great job? If you can avoid even just a handful of little mistakes like that, this course pays for itself. Use it consistently going forward, and it's a significant investment to your operation and yourself. If I hadn't received the money from the CIM Western Branch to join this program, I wouldn't be the person I am today. If my boss knew then what he knows now about the impact it can actually have, I'm willing to bet he would have considered it smart money and he would have found a way to make it happen. And we're coal miners. <clears throat> so from a personal standpoint, and I know I can say this because my company didn't pay for me to attend this program, even if it didn't help me professionally, it would still be worth every penny. It strengthened my relationship with my wife, Alana, uh, and with the people around me that mattered most to a point that I've never experienced before. It's about asking questions, and it's about asking the hard questions. It's helped me understand where I'm coming from, where they're coming from, and most importantly, now I know that I have more than two feelings. <laughs> <laughs> I want to challenge you guys. I want to challenge everyone in this room to make leadership development a personal priority for you and the people you lead. For me and my fellow cohort members, Marjolaine, Kelsey, Angela, Christine, there you are, and of course, Rosie. <clears throat> CIM's leading and mining program was fundamentally transformational, and I believe this program is vital to our industry's success. We need to stop leadership training, and we need to start developing ourselves as leaders. If you're wondering what the difference is between training and development, talk to Rosie. Join her for breakfast tomorrow and have a listen. Our industry needs this especially because of how cyclical we are. I do want to warn you guys, though, that it's not something that you're going to learn at a two-day course or a week-long workshop in a book or on the Internet. It isn't even something that you're going to learn in a year-long developmental program like this one. It's lifelong. It really is. But as part of my plug, I will say that a high-quality year-long program like CIM's Leading and Mining will help you understand that, and it'll help you deal with the fact that leadership development is ongoing. It will help you build relationships with other people in the industry, people who could be working in com a completely different role, but strangely enough, go through the same challenges as you do every day from a leadership standpoint. It will help you learn the skills and continually continue to develop them for the long term, and I truly believe that this industry needs to think longer term than we do. <clears throat> People in, in this room right now are the ones that can make a difference and really transform our industry. Finally, I know that some of the people from the CIM's Western District are here today, 
And I want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for the opportunity. Thank you. Merci.